stars. This was a plea for maintaining but redefining sovereignty, pointing to the tensions between uh, the legitimacy of nation states on the one hand and the need for having uh, effective international institutions on the other. And uh, our next speaker, Or Young, is extending on this issue by talking about the tension between the adaptiveness of institutions, of environmental institutions, and their accountability. Professor Arne Young is uh, at the School of Environmental Science and Management at the University of California. He has been one of the leading uh, experts and scholars on uh, international environmental institutions for many years. Uh, he has also served in many uh, practical and more uh, advice-oriented committees. For example, he has served for six years as the founding chair of the Committee on the Human Dimensions of Global Change of the, uh, uh, of the National Academy of Sciences in the United States and is now chair of the Scientific Steering Committee of the International Project on International Dimensions of Global Environmental Change. He has been also served as vice president of the International Arctic Science Committee and is currently one of the leaders in the development of a decentralized university of the Arctic. Arne Young, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Michael. <clears throat> so, it's time for your daily dose of words from me. <laughs> I shall try to say something quite different this morning from what I've said before, uh, and hope to hold your interest. I shall also do my best to comply with the chair's original request for eight minutes. Let's see, let's see if I succeed. <laughs> But in order to try to do that, I've got to talk about one idea, just one single idea. I call this idea the adaptiveness accountability dilemma with respect to environmental institutions, environmental governance uh, systems. I started out calling it the adaptiveness accountability tension, but I've come to think that it's actually in some ways, a real dilemma. Um, two major goals that we generally have in building environmental governance systems are first, um, <coughs> to, uh, to increase adaptiveness, to make these institutions as adaptive as possible in order to maintain resilience and robustness, effectiveness. Uh, and secondly, we also want them, these institutions, to increase or maximize accountability uh, so that we can address the legitimacy issues, the democratic control issues, uh, and so on. So thus, adaptiveness and accountability uh, are both considered to be desirable characteristics. They also, by the way, <clears throat> for those of you who've been here listening these several days are two of the five A's of the new Earth System Governance Project of ISDP. But I want to try to make the case that there is a growing and I think quite significant um, tension or dilemma between the achievement of these two uh, goals. So um, <clears throat> if we are looking at complex, dynamic, socio-ecological systems, which are characterized by nonlinear change, often abrupt change, and very frequently irreversible change, changes which may have fairly nasty consequences for social welfare, what do we want to do in order to address the challenge of these dynamic socio-ecological systems? Well, a couple of things we want to do. One is that we want to allow for prompt, speedy responses. Uh, we need to be able to react quickly when we're concerned about 
abrupt and nonlinear irreversible kinds of changes. And secondly, because these systems are highly complex, these socio-ecological systems, we find that in order to maintain resilience, there's apt to be a need for a fairly significant element of adjustability. In other words, we want to we want to authorize the managers, those responsible for the implementation and application of these governance systems, we want to authorize them to have a fair amount of discretion, fair amount of leeway in terms of making adjustments that are needed in order to keep these governance systems functioning effectively. <clears throat> On the other hand, we also are increasingly concerned about <clears throat> um, accountability. Think of this in terms of things like the climate regime or other regimes as well. Uh, in order to maximize accountability, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we should widen the array of stakeholders. We should uh, grant a voice for purposes of minimizing the democracy deficit to as many stakeholders, as many relevant stakeholders as possible. <clears throat> um, we also should uh, change um, procedures to uh, increase transparency and to maximize the number of opportunities for stakeholder input with respect to major decisions. Uh, think in terms of things like in the United States, the um, National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, whose major characteristic was to increase the opportunities, to, to, to introduce a procedure to increase the opportunities for stakeholder involvement, but in a way of, that, of course, has a fairly time-consuming uh, consequence. So what's the, uh, what's the, what's the dilemma? Um, well, uh, adaptability, adaptiveness uh, requires prompt action, maybe even significant adjustments in the existing institutional arrangements. Accountability tends to slow down the process. In order to ensure stakeholder involvement, in order to ensure that legitimate participants have a voice, we have to have time. So we have a tension between the need for prompt action and the need for due process. Um, adaptability requires uh, the authorization of managers to make significant adjustments in institutional arrangements. Accountability calls for stakeholder involvement prior to introducing adjustments. So here we now have a tension between the danger of being technocratic on the one hand, authorizing managers to make changes, and on the other hand, the danger of paralysis if we allow every stakeholder to have a voice, to have a say, and accept the length of time required to pursue this kind of process. So here it seems to me we have a, an interesting dilemma where we have two desirable goals or characteristics or attributes of our environmental governance systems, which are hard to maximize at the same time. So what can we do about this? Uh, my argument is that this tension, this dilemma, is not going to go away as we deal with larger and more complex uh, socio-ecological systems and as we have increasing concern for minimizing the democracy deficit, we're going to confront the tension between these two uh, concerns. So here are three things, and this is what I want to close with, three things that we might do, they're not mutually exclusive, we could do them all, but three things that might help to at least alleviate, not eliminate, but alleviate uh, this dilemma. The first is fairly obvious. We could, uh, we could play.